church. Let me go to Pastor Che on right here. Uh, che, when you see this, you said something earlier before we went on the air here t tonight with this program, that it's a cultural problem. Uh, explain what you mean. Well, it's really the gospel of the kingdom has to be preached to all nations, Matthew 24, verse 14. And what I mean by that is the gospel of the kingdom is the biblical values of the kingdom. And that is to be inculcated in society. And that's why he says in the Great Commission, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And so we're not teaching the whole counsel of God as churches. And I'm not saying the church is totally responsible, but we're to be the prophetic voice. And the way we change culture is by establishing values, biblical values in any given society. And unfortunately, the church is really weak. I think it really does rise and falls with churches and pastors, if I could say that. In Joel 2, verse 12, it says, Afterwards, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. In verse 28, but after what? It says, Return to the Lord with all your heart. In verse 12. Uh, and then it says, Let the pastors weep between the porch and the altar and cry out, Spare your people, Lord. Don't make us a byword. Well, we're a byword right now. The church has become totally irrelevant. Gen Z thinks we're absolutely totally irrelevant. And the reason why is because we're not teaching the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, and those uh, who really follow him must be people of the truth. It's amazing. This uh, It says in Proverbs 6, 16, six things the Lord hates, seven, which is an abomination. And those are two very strong words, hate and abomination. But two out of the seven is lying. First is a proud look, but the second says a lying tongue. And then later on, it goes on to say false witness who bears lies again twice. And yet we're to be the people of the truth, the foundation of God's throne. This is Psalm 89, verse 14, is righteousness and justice and truth and love proceed from his throne. And so truth is paramount. And yet we are so secret sensitive that we want to just placate our tithers, right. that we won't That's speak so out on abortion. We won't speak out on it, what marriage is between a man and a woman. And as a result of that, we've watered down the whole counsel of God, the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we see this reflection in the church. So it's not a political issue. It's a red state in Ohio. But 56% right. voted for abortion until the day of birth. And that, to me, is evil. And it's a reflection of our culture in our nation. But it specifically, is a reflection of the church culture because we're to be salt and light. That's true. We are to yeah. be salt and light. We got what this says is our work is nowhere near done. We've got so much more to do. Uh, the attack on culture keeps going. And I think we're still, the curtain's still being pulled back and we're understanding just what we're up against. In fact, let me read you, takes me to my next topic. Uh, this tweet with Kurt Cameron, who's joining us, calling out something that you and I probably grew up with. Must read. Ever wondered how all the sexually explicit, morally disgusting, and dangerous books get into our children's schools, classrooms, and libraries? Sky Tree Fairs and I did a deep dive and discovered who the real wolf in grandma's clothing is. We see you, Scholastic. Uh, please welcome our good friend, Kirk Cameron. Welcome, Kirk. Uh, explain. Tell me it's not true. Hey, bro. No. Well, I'm for those of us who have read Little, read Little Red Riding Hood, um, yes, there is uh, somebody who is eaten grandma and dressed up as grandma who wants to devour the children. And in our public schools, unfortunately, that is scholastic books. You know, we've all seen the videos of the moms at the school board screaming at the school board leadership um, about the explicit sexual material inside of these books, these gender confusing materials for children that are in kindergarten, first, second, third grade, up to fifth grade, sixth grade. And the question has to be asked, where is this material coming from? Well, we've finally decided we need to go after the head of the snake and the largest publisher of children's books and distribution of children's books in schools and libraries is Scholastic. So they have books like these, uh, Welcome to St. Hell, my trans teen misadventure, uh, uh, books like uh, Stars in Their Eyes and Rick and Melissa. And this is grooming children, uh, nothing less than grooming them to explore the world of drag, gender confusion. These books have nudity, sexual acts, including scars from breast removal on minor girls and instruction manuals on how to change their sex organs into two inch willies, as they like to say, and then hide all of it from your children. 
This is all laced in these benign looking books given to children in libraries and schools. And uh, we've got a solution for this. Yeah, what's, what's the solution? Well, go to the website and see this for yourself because I didn't believe it until I actually got the books. We bought them, I read them, I've seen it in my own with my own eyes. We have a PDF that documents all of it. Book covers, page numbers, diagrams, and you can see that Facebook even censors these images because it violates their obscenity community guidelines. Download the PDF and show it to your friends, parents, the principal of your school, your librarian, and then replace harmful scholastic book fairs in your school, and they're taking place there in your library, with wholesome book fairs. I've partnered with a great company called Sky Tree, and they have vetted over 500 books, and we're in over 700 public schools and private schools already replacing Scholastic and their nasty material with wholesome material that you can really get behind. And so just go to skytreebookfairs.org to download the PDF and then ditch Scholastic and replace it with Skytree book fairs. Okay, so so Kirk, where can we go get the uh, the PDF you were talking about? What website is that on so people can go see that? Same place, skytreebookfairs.org. Okay, there you go. All right, look at this. I'm holding up here. I don't know if you can see, Kurt, you're outside somewhere. Uh, this is the LGBTQIA book list. Uh, yeah. This is, I, I mean... They're not. They're not shy about. They're, they're. This is their own material here, promoting what yeah. they all these books they have and what they have in them, uh, whether it's gay, trans, um, uh, queer, binary, non-binary, transgender, <laughs> pan. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's crazy, but they think the gospel is crazy. They think this idea that we go by a book that's thousands of years old is absolutely True. insane. So it comes down to our presuppositions and. We shouldn't be surprised about this. I mean, we lost the game culturally when we handed our children over to a state school system that is fundamentally Marxist and secular humanist in its framework, in its worldview. And when we did that, we essentially uh, give up Deuteronomy 6 and we hand the playbook over to the state who wants to do uh, – few things more than separate children from their parents. And you can do that by sexualizing them early with material like this. And then uh, once you've got the children in your discipleship camp for seven, eight hours a day, which, by the way, you and I pay for with our tax dollars in state government schools, you've got the future. All you need to do is play the long game. And we're just seeing that play out now. But there's still a window of time. God's uh, window of grace is still apparently open. Mm -hmm. And if we can gather, repent, right. pray, like Pastor Che just said, and we begin to take back the one most important thing, educating your children. Do not let other people take that sacred duty away from you that God entrusted to you and me. If we can't do that, we're done. All right, let me show you this. Uh, this is from Libs of TikTok. This is a book called Neither, and the suggested age range is three to six. It teaches toddlers they can be toddlers did you hear what i said toddlers that they can be non-binary oh, yeah. and that there are many genders the author travels around the, to schools reading it to kids just like uh, your good friend kirk there does they're after your kids uh look at this one nick and charlie nick and charlie a book published by scholastic garnered attention after a sixth grader confronted a school board over its content, it's marketed to children 14 years old and up. This, it just keeps going on. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. We're coming for them. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. We're coming for them. I know that bothers you. It's painful to sit there and watch that. Of course, they. San Francisco Gay Men's Choir, they took that video down, but we still had it recorded. Uh, Producer Jason, good job there. Let me bring in everybody again. You see this, Pastor Che, uh, you know, this. you talked about the culture. This is exactly what we're faced with. They're not hiding. They're coming for our children. 
Well, the good news is that the Bible says the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. We're going to win Revelation 11, 15, and we have to be in faith that we're going to see a massive revival and reformation of society. And right now it's happening. There's a movement right now, and I just spoke at a women's conference in Portland with 5,000 women, and the whole theme was don't mess with my kids. That was the theme of the conference. And we're mobilizing a million women with our network, with Lou Engel, Jenny Donlin. They're both leaders in our network. And we're mobilizing a million women to go to the mall in 2024 on the Day of Atonement in October, not only just to pray and repent, because it's more than that. We are activating these women to run for office, to run for school board, to go to the school board, to protest this transgender nonsense that are shoving down our throat. Now, you know, in our state of California, we, we legalized on January 1st, 2023, we became a transgender sanctuary state. And what that means is that if you are from Texas, for example, you could come if you're 17 and under to our state and we will give you transition and it's actually mutilation operations at our tax dollars. That's how evil it's become in America. And as California goes, so goes the rest of the United States. And enough is enough. And even Democrats are joining, don't mess with our kids, because when you start touching our children, I think the devil has overplayed his hand. They're saying, listen, you know, these are hard kids. And Proverbs 22, 6 says, you're to train up the child the way he should go or she should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. It's not even even the Sunday school or the church's job. Right. They're to support the parents. And so we for, we homeschooled our four children. And I thank God we did because mm -hmm. they all love Jesus. My son's with me. He's a pastor. And I really feel that we need to see a, and thank God there is a, a reformation and a movement of homeschooling. And Kirk, thank you so much for championing that. But I just want to just say that we need to take back the responsibility to steward our kids under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's really his kids, and we are to train them up according to his ways. But that's the good news. In the midst of all the darkness, uh, a great light is shining. You know, it's Isaiah 60, one through three, Darkness covers the earth, deep darkness, but the Lord will rise upon us. His glory will appear before us and nations will come to our light. And we're going to see a great harvest and transformation. I'm prophesying that for America and the world. Yeah. All right, Kirk, I want to give it back to you here. I know I only got you a few more minutes. Give you a chance to comment. Yeah, um, but I, I love you. I love your hopeful optimism, uh, Pastor. And. And I share that because of the faithfulness of God and the victory of his gospel. And um, I, I want to comment on, you know, we're coming for your children. We're coming for your children. Listen, they don't even have to come for our children anymore. The system has been put in place and we're handing our children to them when we send them to government schools to be discipled for seven to eight hours a day. So I, I want to say... Moms and dads, grandparents, there is, uh, there is absolutely a way to get around this, and that is don't put your children in the, in, in the middle of the swamp and the prison and the trap. God has given them to you. Train them up in the way they should go. Um, teach these things diligently to your children, heart to heart. Relationally transfer the biblical worldview and the values of the kingdom of the gospel to your children. And if we can start there, we've got a fighting chance uh, to to bring heaven to this culture here on earth uh, as salt and light, like Pastor said. So uh, let's let's not be whiners about the culture. Let's be winners as we uh, create the culture by applying the word of God to all spheres of society. Yeah, thank you, Kirk. You know, I want to go back to something. You can first off skytreebookfairs.org. Uh, go look them up, get all the information you need. But And we'll say goodbye to you, Kirk. I know you've got to go. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for all you're doing Thank for you, our sir, kids Greg. and Brave Books. Thank you all. Keep Thank us you. up to date anytime. 
Thank you. God bless you guys. God bless you. All right. I want to go back to a book that I brisk, I went right by neither. So guys, I know I skipped that video, but I think some of you, uh, of the older generation, you don't get to see, you're not going to the library and picking up books. I want you to see an example of what's in the library. And John, I want you to see this. So look at this book. It's called Neither. Watch. I said it before, but this is a great book for introducing small children to the idea of being non-binary. You know, a lot of LGBTQ kid lit really focuses on identity terms and ends up not being very accessible to its target audience, young readers. So let's see how Airly Anderson does things differently in neither. Once upon a time, there were two kinds, this and that, these and those one or the other. Right away we see we are in a world of binaries, bunnies and birds, and if you look very closely there might be a couple that don't perfectly fit in, but broadly speaking everybody is the same until... Honk! Ask your child, oh, what do you think that is? Is that a bunny or a bird? And you know what? The crowd asks the same question. What kind are you? I'm both. You can't be both. You must be neither. I'm neither? Why don't you find somewhere else? You're not one of us. You're neither. Neither, neither, neither. You could ask what feelings are our friends having right now? Maybe one feels sad and some of the other ones feel angry. And you know, a great touch from this author is that there is not on page like narration. You can just get the dialogue. It's a great example of trusting your reader, even when they're very young, to infer the story you're telling if you're telling it well. Where did you come from? Honk. I'm from the land of this and that, but I'm neither, so I'm looking for somewhere else to fit in. This isn't somewhere else, but you will fit in here. Where is here? Oh, so many different kinds. It's the land of all. You could ask your child, you know, what creatures do we see here? Maybe some we recognize and some that are new. Personally, I love the puppy fish back there on the trampoline. Come play with us. Oh, but I'm different from everyone here. I'm neither red, nor orange, nor yellow, nor blue. Exactly. Nice little rainbow for us here. All right, John, you see that. It's painful to watch. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, but you can see the psychology in this. Uh, it, it, to an unrenewed mind, unredeemed mind, right. it, it's, well, yeah, we need to be, yeah, all and good. Uh, it's a slippery slope, and that's we cannot allow our children to be sucked into this. John, your thoughts. Yeah, it's, it's deception. In every great story, every great movie, think about it. Everything you've ever seen that you love has the story of the gospel in it. But mixed in it is also the story of the garden and the fall of the angels and the fall of Satan. And he was not an ugly beast like he's portrayed. He was beautiful and he had an angelic voice. It's the deception that it seems right. Something seems right here. And it's playing on the same thing that they had, that Satan did in the garden. And he did with Jesus. If you are the son of man, did God really? And so they're playing on these little toddlers that might have hurt feelings, feel like they don't belong, feel like they're confused, compare themselves and they tap into that hurt, wounded feeling and then distort it. There's not one God. There's not two genders. There's all this other stuff. And so it is deceptive. I want to say something else, Gene, because sometimes I love what Kirk's doing. I applaud him for that. But some of our listeners may be going, well, who goes to the library and who, do, who does the books? You just showed what's really the biggest danger is what's happening on TikTok. There was a story that came out with all these young kids, you know, chanting for Hamas who were decapitated Capitating innocent babies and they're out there fighting for them. And there was all these algorithms on TikTok, which is owned by the Communist Party of China. And it is literally not just uh, infiltrating and spying on us. It is poisoning the minds of this young generation. And so that poison is something as parents, we need to go fight, eradicate, identify, and then deal with that. And I love what Pastor Chi's doing, Jenny's doing, Lou Engel. They're trying to do uh, a huge march uh, next year. I'm supportive of that. And and it's, it's up to us. It's up to us to fight for our parents and fight for the future, not just of our kids, but for all the kids, because that's what we we do as believers. And so thank you so much, Gene, for pointing this stuff out, highlighting people who are working in different mountains and different spheres, because I think I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, but we have a fight, a dark, dark fight in front of us. Yeah, we do. And I think we're still seeing the level of the battle that's in front of us. Uh, Pastor Che, I want you to, uh, as we wrap up this particular section, I want you to pray for people because there's a lot of people out there that are going, this happened to my kid. This happened to my grandchild. I didn't know 
I need to know what to do next and how to do and you know it it's mm -hmm. it's unnerving when you have this in your family so pastor give you a chance to comment and then pray for the folks yes i, I want to just be realistic I, I do i'm very very hopeful i'm very positive but the truth is is that there's two parallel tracks there's going to be darkness and light going into the last days we're going to have sheep nations goat nations uh, there's going to be shaking Haggai 2 7 but the, I'll fill this house with glory so what we're seeing is the overwhelming uh, shaking that's going on with everything from COVID in 2020 to what's going on with Hamas and the evil of decapitating babies this has been confirmed as the Jewish people are so careful about burial and the dignity of burial when they found these charred bodies decapitation woman raped a baby in an oven burnt to death. And so we're seeing both evil and good. But I'm trying to say that at the end, Jesus will reign until he put all his enemies under his feet in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And so the last enemy being death. And so I just want to just say that we win at the end of the day. And so I want those who are watching to be in faith. And I just want to pray right now that, that we would fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. With a joy set before him, endure the cross because he saw the ecclesia, he saw the church, those who would love him and worship him. And Lord, we thank you so much right now that uh, we're seeing over almost a billion evangelicals in the world right now. And your word says the harvest is at the end of the age, and we believe there's going to be so many nations saved because your word says in Psalm 2, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth as your possession. And we pray as you taught us to pray in Matthew 6, 9 and 10, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we know the foundation of your throne is justice and righteousness, truth and love. And we pray that justice will reign, that your love and mercy will come to this world, the globe, and our nation in particular. And Lord, we just pray for mercy in the light of the election. We realize, Lord, we really need historic revival. So we ask you to rend the heavens and come down and we pray for historic revival that will bring about the transformation of this nation and as this nation is an apostolic nation that would impact the nations we pray for the peace of Jerusalem we pray yes. Lord God now that in the midst of all the shakings that you will lead people to Christ and we claim yes, uh, Romans eleven twenty six 26 that all of Israel will be saved as a result of all the shaking that's taking place we ask this yes. in Yeshua HaMashiach's name in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen.